Hello, today I'm going to demonstrate making a flange in a rib today. I've already done my uh, nose ribs for my uh, Zenith 650 and you can see an example of a pressed flange here and I will be covering the various steps that I go through for producing the flange. Now the part that we will actually be working on today are rear ribs and this is an example of a rear rib where I've already pressed the two rear flanges. Uh, the flange diameters are 95 millimeters and I will be doing those as a group and the part that we will actually be working with is rear rib number two and you can already see an example of where I have cut the hole out. And what I will be demonstrating is the cutting of this hole and the use of the flanging die that I have constructed, which I will provide more details on. So I will get set up on my mill and demonstrate the, uh, the use of the circle cutting tool and the uh, actual process. Okay, so the first thing I want to <clears throat> discuss briefly is the circle cutting tool itself. Now there are a lot of people that uh, have probably tried to use this tool and found it rather difficult, if not dangerous to use. Uh, but actually it's a very safe tool to use, but the important thing is to have a rigid setup and to turn very slowly. I will give a demonstration of the speed that I'm using here without anything set up yet. So I've got a, this mill takes a three-phase converter, so you'll probably hear some noise from the phase converter running, but then uh, we'll uh, fire it up and, and you can see at what speed that I turn this and, and it works very well for me. So if you did not have the speed control set up, or have the speed slowed down on this mill, essentially that's what you would see. And that would be a totally uncontrollable speed. Uh, so let me drop the mill down into low gear, and also turn it back on. This is the speed that you will see me cutting at, so that's probably around 60, maybe 100 RPM. And that speed works just fine. Uh, I think the basic rule to keep in mind with you, when, using, when using a circle cutter is that if the tool is scaring you, then you're probably not using it right. So now we'll go ahead and get uh, everything set up for the cut. Uh, important item to keep in mind is that you want everything rigidly set up and when you're actually making the cut that you're completely hands-free. So that means that you want to have everything securely clamped down. Now the board that I've got here actually fits on my mill and then just fits inside of the inside of the vise and uh, that has worked very well for me for uh, doing drilling, especially on smaller parts or with wood. So go ahead and get the clamps set up here. And of course you want to have the, uh, the drill bit drop down in the hole just to make sure things don't shift around. And just get everything clamped down. Far side. And over here. Try and clamp in as close as possible. Make sure everything clears properly. Which we look like we're good. So we'll drop back into low gear and bring this up. I'll be turning the phase converter on again, so may get some extra noise, and we'll go ahead and proceed with the cut.
Okay, I paused the video for a moment because I realized that the clamps were blocking. So I've rearranged the clamp a little bit here to try and give everyone a little bit better view of the actual cutting process. So we'll turn the phase converter on again. And we'll proceed with the cut. This is a slow, steady speed feed. And it goes along, it'll sit there and just pull a nice little chip off. And just using hand feed. Gets it. So we'll go ahead and pull the clamps real quick. There is the cut disc and then the actual cut flange. So we need to do a little bit of cleanup on this. Uh, need, it's best to do your deburring now rather than waiting until after you've cut the flange. So pause the video and uh, I will demonstrate uh, some deburring techniques that I've, that I've used. Okay, one thing I just want to cover briefly is uh, is deburring. It's definitely better to do the deburring now while everything is flat rather than waiting until after the flanging. At least that's been my experience. Of course, there's uh, numerous ways to do it. Uh, one of my tools I like to, to use is that one, which has a little notch in there. Of course, it's very easy just to come inside and run this around to knock any burrs off. The one other tool I thought I would just mention real quick that I've used recently is a uh, is a basically I guess you could call it a thin sander. I think I've seen it referenced as a file sander. This one uh, is one made by Makita, and essentially it's a got a three eighths three eighths inch wide belt on it, and I've just found this extremely useful uh, for for doing deburring on aluminum. Uh, it just almost seems like a, an eraser for, for burrs and, and rough edges. But this is usually the tool that I prefer to use. But I found it very easy to control. Uh, I know uh, there, there are some <clears throat> uh, other powered options, uh, things that you can uh, mount up in your drill press, for example, uh, that can do the job. Uh, but actually, I found this extremely convenient, not only for doing stuff like this, but also coming along and just lightly running that along the edges to, to knock, any, knock any burrs off. So what I will do at this point, I need to finish uh, continue deburring, and then we'll get set up for the actual... Uh, uh, pressing in of the flange. Okay, before we do any pressing, I will give a uh, uh, an explanation of how this uh, pressing flange is formed. Uh, the the basic flange press is made from plywood. Uh, I have upper and lower supports made out of uh, out of steel, which was just a, a plasma cut out. Uh, to provide extra support. Uh, I had originally tried to, to press directly with the plywood and it didn't take long to, to realize that the plywood would come apart if I didn't have something to more evenly distribute the force. So this is just a uh, bolt going through and mounts into, the, uh, mounts into the vise and clamps onto the bolt. Let's pull the screw. And of course the press plate and just a, a press ring that the plate presses against. And then the next part is the actual uh, flanged part and this was cut on a, on a CNC router uh, just using standard three-quarter inch plywood. 
And this is just a, another centering ring, and then this is a, uh, uh, again, CNC cut uh, for 45 degrees. So we'll put this all back together again and get set up to uh, start pressing our uh, flanges. All right, we'll go ahead and press our piece. I'll just demonstrate one flange here. Of course, this fits over the uh, over the centering part. One important thing to verify is that you are even all the way around and that you're not cocked off at an angle because otherwise you won't get an even press. Okay, then the forming ring, of course, one thing I've learned the hard way is, uh, you know, make sure your forming ring is in the correct orientation. And then we get our other little press ring in place. <clears throat> Put the uh, pressure, pressure plate on. And then we just gradually screw this down. And off screen here, I've got some additional support on the uh, on the flange uh, to support to help support it. And I'm just doing a final check to make sure even, everything's even all the way around. And then we just start screwing things down. And it doesn't take much force. And you just keep turning until everything is compressed evenly all the way around, which it looks like it is. And Screw everything again. Get all the parts out. And I'm assuming it's in focus. That is the that is the pressed part. And then we'll just go through the same process for the second flange, and that will be it for for doing the 95 millimeters. There's two more that need to be done on this one, but uh, those go pretty much the same as the 95s. Okay, so here is the finished result. Uh, both flanges uh, have been pressed for the 95 millimeter. Uh, in another run, I will get the larger flanges done. And that pretty much uh, completes the, uh, the demonstration. Uh, hopefully anyone that's a scratch builder, uh, maybe you'll find some of the techniques here useful. There's definitely more than one way to do this kind of thing. This is sort of the, uh, the methodology that I've developed. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask.